So this is a segment about calculating phase fractions. So we've started to look at phase diagrams, and now we're at the stage where we want to know how much of a certain phase is present and what its composition is. So we can read the composition from the phase diagram. We've got to do a calculation to find out how much of a certain phase there is. So let's take a phase diagram. We'll draw a phase diagram here. We'll have a, a temperature axis, somewhere like there, and we'll have a composition axis, somewhere like there. So this is my temperature, temp in degrees C, say, and we'll have, we'll go from A to B, and we'll go in that direction, atom fraction B, from 0% you know, to 100% or something like that. Um, and we'll say we'll have a liquid phase up here, liquid L, and we'll have a solid phase down here, say, and in between, we'll have a solid plus liquid region in our phase diagram. So we've got a liquid phase with complete solubility at high temperatures and a solid phase with complete solubility at low temperatures. And we've got a, a two-phase region in the middle. So a pure A would solidify directly into straight solid. And there'd be a, an arrest there as you went, gave up the latent heat of transformation. Pure B would go from liquid to solid at this temperature, whatever that number was. And that will, again, there would be an arrest associated with the latent heat. If we took an alloy here in between, then if we take an alloy here with this composition, then as we started off, we'd be at liquid up here. And then we'd start to form some solid when we got to the liquidus line there. So we could read across that temperature over here, and the composition at which solid started to form, that would be that composition, um, that number there, whatever that was, 5 or 10% or something. And then somewhere in the middle of solidification, we'd be with solid of that composition and liquid of that composition. Um, and then when we completed solidification, we'd be down at this temperature, and we'd be over here, uh, solid, uh, solid at this composition, the alloy composition, and the very last liquid would be over here um, at that composition. So the question we want to answer in this little segment is what is the phase fraction somewhere during the solidification process? So we'll look at that at this midpoint. I'll just take out that little line. Take out that little line there. So at this midpoint in temperature, we've got a composition of the solid, which is this number here. We've got a composition of the liquid, which is this number here. And we've got a composition of our alloy, which we'll just call C. And we've got a volume fraction of each of those. So we've got a volume fraction of the solid, and we've got a volume fraction of the liquid. And we know that uh, we've got those have to sum to 1. It's either all solid or liquid or somewhere in between. Um, so then we need to think about, well, what's the uh, overall composition? How do we conserve atoms? So if we had, say, uh, say this was 50%, say that was 25% and that was 75%, well, in composition. So we could get, if we had uh, half of that, and half of that, half of 25 plus a half of 75, we'd average out at a composition of 50%. So if that's 25 and 75, our alloy composition is fixed, is, is that 50% or whatever. So what we're saying is, is that the overall composition is given by the composition of the solid times the volume fraction of the solid plus the composition of the liquid times the volume fraction of the liquid. And that, well, that, and that's going to be true in atomic or mass percent. So we could say it, we've drawn it with atomic, but it could be either. So the mass fraction of B in the alloy is equal to the volume fraction of solid times the composition of the solid plus the volume fraction of the liquid times the composition 
of the liquid. And what physical principle is that expressing? That's expressing the idea that we're conserving the number of B atoms and implicitly the number of A atoms. So this is an expression of conservation. It's a conservation rule. Um, and so given those two equations, these two, we can go and solve the problem. So if I wipe that away. So we can say, well, the volume fraction of the liquid, that's 1 minus the volume fraction of the solid by rearranging this equation. So then we just have to, oops, there's a plus there. So then we just have to multiply this out and we'll be more or less home free. So we've got C equals CSVS plus CL plus CL times minus VS, so that's going to be a minus sign. So we can collect together the VS terms. That's CS minus CL times VS plus CL. So if we pull this over here, that's going to be C minus CL. Pull this down, CS minus CL is equal to the volume fraction of solid. And that's our solution. The volume fraction of solid is equal to C minus CL over CS minus CL. So what's that look like on our diagram? The volume fraction of solid, that's the volume fraction associated here, volume fraction of solid, is equal to C minus CL, uh, which is over there, so that's this number, it's actually the inverse of that number, over CS minus CL, so that's also a negative number. So if we multiply both of those three by minus one, that's going to be CL minus C over CL minus CS, magic. So they're both positive numbers, so it's that number divided by that number. And the easy way to remember this is that if you want the volume fraction here, it's equal to the, the opposite little distance over the whole distance. That is the opposite little distance over the whole distance. And that's called the lever rule. So we'll look at why this is just in a moment. Um, so if you take that either way around, we can write that down in two different ways. So we can write that down as, I'll just repeat it here, VL equals CL minus C divided by CL minus CS. Or if you do it the other way around and eliminate VL from the equation, you get the alternative form, which is um, C minus CS over CL minus CS. So that's the volume fraction of the liquid is the opposite little distance over the whole distance. That distance is, CL minus, uh, is C minus CS. That distance is CL minus CS. And so they're just complementary to each other. It doesn't matter which you use because the volume fractions will add to one. So you can work out the volume fraction of solid and then you can know the liquid. And if you want other way around, other way around. It's all fine. Um, now, if you divide one of these by the other, you've got VS over VL is equal to CL minus C um, divided by C minus CS. Because when you divide CL minus C over CL minus CS and then divide it by that thing again, the CL minus CS is on the bottom, will cancel out. So that's the, vol the ratio of the two fractions. So I don't know, 10 to 90, 1 to 9 something like that, a ninth. Um, and if you multiply this out, then you've got C minus CS times VS is equal to CL minus C times VL. So and what people think of this as is they think of it as being a bit like a weight balance. So they think of it as being a bit like... Um, two levers on a um, on the either end of a seesaw. So you imagine you've got Vs times C minus Cs, 
So you've got a weight hanging here, which is and the weight is of Vs, times that distance, that's C minus Cs, and that's got to balance the weight on the other side of the seesaw. So that's a weight here of Vl times this amount, which is Cl minus C. And they're sitting there on a seesaw competing with each other. So it's like two people sitting on either side of a seesaw and it's got to be in balance. And so it's called the lever rule. So this is called the lever rule. And that's one way to remember that formula. Um, now it doesn't matter very much how you remember it. Um, you can remember it as this, or you can remember it as that. Um, lots of people in metallurgy remember it this way. That doesn't, you've still got to do the substitution of the sum of the volume fractions being one if you do it that way. So I don't personally actually remember it that way. I remember that it's the opposite little distance over the whole distance. I remember this. I just remember the method, which is that you look at the graph and the volume fraction on this side is the opposite little distance divided by the whole distance. That's that one. That's the way I remember it. But either will work. Um, and I think both are in the formula book, so whichever work for you. But that's how you would uh, do that in practice. So if you're midway through solidification, you come across, you read a composition, you come across, you read a composition, you know your alloy composition, and then you can work out a volume fraction at some point in the solidification process. And that's how you use the lever rule. It's exactly the same if it's not solidification, if it's two or any two-phase region, you do exactly the same calculation, and that's really foundational to metallurgy. If you can't do this, then lots of things in material science you can't do. Um, so this is really one that's worth knowing and understanding being able to use just like that. So that's it for this segment.